Good afternoon to everyone. Um, we are up for our next scheduled talk, and this will be Dustin, who comes to us from Canonical, and he will be talking about lunch, Launchpad. Launchpad. <laughs> I'm actually not hungry. No, 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 no. This was my fault. Okay. All my fault. I'm actually not hungry and still had a Freudian slip. So, Launchpad, and uh, when, when we are Working on this, um, setting up the schedule, I asked Dustin a little bit more about um, what this was going to be about. And by that point in time, we actually didn't know that tomorrow is going to be a whole mini-conf on Launchpad. But Dustin um, promised that he was going to talk about Launchpad from a user's perspective. And right. I think that's, uh, with, without further ado, I'm just going to hand over to him. So here you go. Yeah, thanks. Um, so does anyone know where this quote comes from? First, I was afraid. I was petrified. A song, right? Gloria Gaynor. Yeah. So, so yes, I will survive. Um, so yesterday I was walking down Cuba Street getting some lunch, and one of the very bohemian uh, locals was playing this on an accordion. I don't think <laughs> I'd ever heard a disco song played on an accordion. But um, anyway, I, I, I couldn't help but laugh. Um, so yeah, so this is Launchpad from a from a, a user's perspective. I'm an um, upstream. Uh, maintainer, a developer, a triager, a packager as well. We've got a whole day tomorrow on Launchpad that will go into um, uh, details and plans. And But this is how I use Launchpad to make my work as a distribution uh, packager and as a maintainer, I guess more importantly for this group, um, uh, why it's useful to me. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I came from a background where Launchpad was not part of my daily workflow, but today it is part of my daily workflow. And um, it, it's critical to my productivity and my management, being able to take care of, of several projects, dozens of packages, and um, literally hundreds of bugs per day that, that hit my inbox that I've got to take some action on. Um, before Launchpad and before Canonical, I, I didn't brand these slides. I'm trying to do this as objectively as possible, not necessarily as a Canonical or as an Ubuntu person, but as a, a user of Launchpad. Before Launchpad, I spent eight years at IBM in, the, in most of that in the uh, LTC. And I did a, a, a year on site at Red Hat. Um, I've, I've used a lot of different um, source revision systems, um, mostly SourceForge and Bugzilla before that, but CVS, SVN, Git, um, some really nasty ones that were used inside of IBM um, as well. But um, I can honestly say Launchpad has improved my life as a developer in more ways than I can possibly cover in, in this 45-minute segment. Um, I maintain several projects upstream. Some are big, some are tiny. Um, EcryptFS and Biobo are the, the two that, that I spend most of my time maintaining. But beyond maintaining these projects and being an upstream maintainer, uh, managing uh, the packages, uh, for dozens of packages that are part of the Ubuntu server, which is basically my, my full-time job. I, I've moved all the projects that I maintain to, to Launchpad. The common interface is just great uh, for, for all of those. And it took some time to get everything I needed, all the information I needed out of, out of SourceForge and into Launchpad, but the tools now are so good, it just imports from CVS and SVN and um, uh, the, the, the various different uh, histories that I needed into Launchpad. It, that's all really smooth now. Um, so this talk is really about what it is uh, in Launchpad that works for me. Um, I hope we have some time toward the end. That maybe other people can share their experiences with what works for them and maybe what doesn't work for them as well. We've got a, a number of Launchpad uh, developers here that I'm sure are interested in hearing that, and uh, you probably can spend all day tomorrow um, really uh, discussing some of those uh, some of those wish list items. Um, but really, this is about improving my my daily productivity and uh, my my experience. I mean, <laughs> I'm a developer because it's fun. Um, it's cool to get paid for it. Too, but I'm a, I, I do a lot of this work on my own time, as I'm sure so many people here do with, uh, with their, their projects of passion. Um, so the way I broke this talk down, there, there's a lot of slides, but I'm flying through them pretty quickly. I, I tried to conceptualize how to explain what I like about Launchpad, and really it comes down to what I'm calling the object model. They use uh, an agile development process and all sorts of processes that I'm not necessarily privy to. But to me, this is the way I, I look at the objects that, that Launchpad's able to manage. People, teams, projects, code, bugs, answers, blueprints, translations. Um, some of these are across the header at the top of Launchpad, and that, you know, I lifted some straight from that. But uh, some aren't, and, but they are important aspects of, of the, 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 the workflow. 
So the, the people aspect is important in that, you know, any site has an account, right? But um, the Launchpad management of people makes it almost a social networking site. I mean, it's, it's as uh, integrated. Uh, it integrates people to me in the same way that, say, uh, um, a Facebook or a, or a LinkedIn. Um, you know, there are people and there are relationships between people and projects and teams. Um, but the individuals, the people in Launchpad, the social networking site, let's say, have certain attributes that are so useful um, for a software project. The most important to me are public SSH and GPG keys. Um, obviously, everything's signed that gets uploaded, um, uh, that the, the, the whole access is based on encryption and security. But having a place that I can go and, and find um, public SSH keys and GPG keys, of course, they're key servers, and that's ultimately what this, this does. Um, but people themselves are assigned tasks. They are members of teams. Um, they're related to projects. Um, I've got screenshots. I, uh, um, I'm really, really glad I took these screenshots yesterday, considering what the network's doing to me today. But uh, <laughs> we've got screenshots, so I don't have my laser pointer. But uh, this is an example of a, a people page. Um, of course, there's a mugshot at the top. But um, th this is the, this, that sort of useful information I'm talking about. Who here has never seen Launchpad? Um, complete newbie. Okay, good. So I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm going to please tolerate this if you if you use Launchpad on a daily basis. Um, but the, the key aspects is that, you know, you got a little blib about yourself, um, but, uh, you know, how to get in touch with, with a certain person. This, is, this can be hidden um, except for people who are logged in. So if you've authenticated with, with Launchpad, you can see other people's email addresses or if you can choose to hide them all together if you'd like. Um, but, you know, team memberships, um, um, go to a page where you can see all the team memberships. But, um, you know, here, here's the, the, the public keys, um, GPG and SSH and so forth. Where a person's located is often interesting. This karma score is, um, is some, some um, pseudo way of how active is this person in, in various projects. Uh, I, I read a book recently that I, was, was really incredible. Um, anyone here read Demon by Daniel Suarez? Kind of a techno, techno thriller. No, well, he wrote a sequel. Um, but in the sequel, people wear these glasses where there's this whole three-dimensional space where floating um, icons hover over people's head that have their, their name and aspects about them. But there's this concept of karma um, that everyone's walking around with this, this sort of karma rating on top of their, their head. Um, and I read that, and I thought, well, that's, that's kind of launchpad sounding. Um, anyway, it's a good book. Um, <laughs> So, and then team memberships is, is another important aspect. So, uh, and that's the sort of the, the social networking um, part of Launchpad. So, um, you know, I'm directly a member of these teams, but I'm indirectly a member of these teams. And that means that one team is a sub team or a sub sub team, and however many, I don't know, there's probably a limit to how many levels of indirection there are, but some of these are two or three levels deep. Um, the, the, the key part is that, you know, ACLs and uh, um, permissions are inherited. Across uh, across team memberships, um, it's it's trivial to to sign up for an account. I guess I didn't mention that, and it's also trivial to create teams and projects. Um, I unfortunately didn't create or didn't snapshot a creation of a project page, but it's it's really straightforward. Um, so teams, yeah, um, individuals, other teams, and then the the ACL aspect is something that I I think is really elegantly done in Launchpad that I've not found in other similar. Um, uh, code hosting sites. Um, so this is a this is a team. Um, I tried to capture the URLs at the top. Uh, I'll make these slides available so that you can find these yourself when you're on a a, a better working network. Um, the key though is that there's there's an owner, um, uh, members, uh, and then some branding uh, and so forth. But across the top, you'll see there's an overview, branches, bugs, blueprints, translations, answers. These are the other objects that I'm working my way through. But each of those tabs across the top can be associated with teams or can be associated with individuals. Almost anything that can be associated with an individual can also be associated with a team. So a bug can be assigned to a team or can be assigned to an individual. A project can be assigned to a team or to an individual. Um, so, so projects, I guess this is kind of the, the cornerstone of, of Launchpad, right? The, the people and the teams are necessary just to sort of get the, the wheels turning. But, you know, what is it really about? It's about managing projects. So projects themselves have their own attributes. Um, I'm, I'm sure 
the guys here who, who, who work with the actual database schema is laughing at the way I've organized this. But <laughs> to me, th these are the aspects, uh, the key points to a, a project. You know, they've got descriptions, some branding logos, the actual downloads, the tarballs that, that you want to upload as a maintainer and say, um, you know, this is, this is release number 1.1. One one. Um, but then screenshots, uh, RSS feeds, the announcement feeds are really useful. And as a maintainer, it's a great way of keeping in touch with my, uh, uh, my users, or rather my users keeping in touch with, with uh, the maintainer, what's going on. So you can throw out announcements uh, when a new release has been, um, has been published, and then it's published to an RSS feed. Um, one or more maintainers for the project or a team that manages the project. Uh, you've got release series and, and milestones. So, you know, in, in Ubuntu, our, uh, our release series are the, the, the code names, right? You know, Hardy, Intrepid, Johnny, Karmic, uh, Lucid, that sort of thing. But you can define your, your series. Within a series, you have milestones. So for us, our milestones uh, in Ubuntu are Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Beta 1, Beta 2. Uh, but your project may also have code names um, and, and milestones, and those are useful to target bugs and work, uh, work being blueprints, to target work items toward those, uh, the, some point in time that you want to deliver this by. And from that aspect, it kind of forms a project management uh, framework. Uh, and it can be fairly effective uh, if it sort of meets your, your model. Um, and then licenses. Licenses are, are very important. We were here... Uh, and the, the last talk was from the Open Solaris guys, and uh, you could see that licensing was an important aspect. Licenses had to be associated with packages and projects, and um, obviously that's important here too. Um, but beyond that, projects also have code branches. That's bizarre, uh, BZR. Um, I'll look, look a little bit at that, but um, for the most part, just the fact that, that code also exists in Launchpad, not just as tarballs, but as uh, a, a, a source control system, um, bugs, answers, and, and blueprints, which we're going to get to. So this is a, a, a sample um, um, a project page. So the, the project page URL is simply Launchpad, and then the, the, the project name, I guess I didn't point out that, that uh, teams and, and users start with a tilde, and then projects uh, omit the, the tilde. And that's how you quickly get to a Launchpad project page. Um, but the project itself has, you know, a short blip about it. Um, a maintainer and a driver, which are different, different can be different people, um, but uh, uh, a development focus being one or more branches that are, that are under here. The licenses and the programming languages are interesting for users looking to volunteer to participate in a project. Um, sometimes there's a bit about um, contributors. And then here are the, the milestones, and th this is a real simple project that just has very direct... Uh, milestones, um, dotted milestone releases. And then I guess fairly obviously in this corner is the, uh, the actual download tarball. So if all you're looking for is to download the source tarball uh, as a downstream or a, some other user, you can grab it pretty easily right there. And this is the announcements bit, the RSS feed. So I, I guess I haven't really been diligent about making announcements here, but some of the, the busier projects, that's extremely useful. Um, so code is, is uh, I guess, the, the most technical aspect of, of Launchpad and um, really the place that, that shines in its integration with Bazaar being our distributed version control system or the, I say our, the, the distributed version control system that is tied into to Launchpad. Um, the, the, the neatest thing about this, and I guess one of the things once I've, I've gotten um, users who want to contribute some, some fix or some patch or um, feature to one of the packages I manage. And I tell them, go get a Launchpad account. Oh, okay, go get a Bazaar account. Oh, okay, let me learn how to do this. The, the neatest thing about it to me is how easy it is to actually push your changes. So literally it takes creating a Launchpad account, uploading an SSH key, um, branching the, 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 the Bazaar repository, and then pushing back to a branch that you can write to. And, I mean, by default, every user that, that, that has done this, created an account and uploaded an SSH key, can instantly start pushing code. Um, and that was really neat. I know it took, it took uh, once I, I, I maintain the, um, I'm one of the, the maintainers of the, the eCryptFS kernel code, and it took months to get an account on, um, on git.kernel.org. 
and it literally ta literally takes seconds to get uh, an account on on Launchpad. Um, I, I think that's pretty cool from a community aspect, being able to to bring people and, and new users in, even if they just want to commit a one line change. Um, they can submit a patch through Launchpad, but it's it's also uh, interesting to to, um, to to be able to do it through the the um, source control system. So I also called out Loggerhead here, um, and I've got a couple of screenshots. But Loggerhead is sort of the Git web-like interface for browsing source code. Um, it, to me, it's really powerful, and I, I use it for a lot of things that um, that make it uh, a bit more visual, especially when I'm trying to instruct someone else on how to do something. I can paste URLs to the to the source code to annotate it, um, annotate it uh, displays of the source code. Um, browsing revision history, obviously, you can do that through the command line from Bazaar, but it's quite useful to do it over over a website as well. Um, and uh, being able to, to release signed uh, tarballs, I, I, I threw that under the the code section because to me that's that's an important aspect of code. Um, and then. I didn't really go into uh, PPAs, personal package archives, because that's pretty Ubuntu-centric. But as an Ubuntu user and, and developer and, and maintainer, it's really useful to be able to push code and have it built on uh, the, the, the build system Soya as within Launchpad and uh, on multiple architectures, architectures that I don't even possess, and, um, and, and be able to push that out to, to users. Who can then download and install it in a signed, secure manner once they've asserted that they trust um, trust that. Um, so here's here's sort of a, a a brief shot of sort of a landing page for code, and this is a, another project that I maintain. And what I can see here are all the other branches that um, that that exist in Launchpad. So the 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 trunk is basically a pointer to to my my branch. Uh, I'm not seeing it at the moment, but anyway. So you know, it's there's sort of a, a short link, BZR branch, LP colon Biobu, and that gets you whatever trunk is pointing to at the moment, which happens to be my branch. But there are all these other branches, you know, most of which haven't been touched in a in a while, um, but but some have. So this person is working on a portability branch for uh, for Biobu, adding autoconf, auto make stuff, and I'm able to uh, to, to branch and merge straight from here and. I'm going to show another screenshot of going through the, the trunk branch, but any of these branches could be could be browsed, and you can look at the, the various files at different states. Um, so this is um, this is having clicked on browse the source code up here uh, would take you to uh, to a landing page that looks like this, where this is the the revision history. So you can see these revisions committed by this person at that date. Uh, all of these are twisties that drop down, and it gives you the the, sh the brief commit message, as well as the files modified. Um, and then, looking directly at the, the files modified, you can you can then uh, sort of surf through the uh, the file structure itself um, at any revision. So this is at head by default set head, but I could go back ten revisions if I needed to see the state of the source code at at that revision. Um, so this is the the loggerhead aspect of of bizarre, bizarre branches. Um, oh, and this is a particular file. So having then gone through and chosen one one particular file, this is a this is Python code. It's syntax highlighted. Uh, one of the the really most useful things I I use, especially when I'm trying to figure out now why in the heck did I do that? Um, you can see in the in the left corner the revision where each of these changes were were made. So if I'm wondering why am I importing, you know, um, I don't know, time here, and I click on this revision, um, it'll take me directly to that commit message that that caused this line to be changed, um, and then I could keep browsing back in time from that. Um, I use that all the time. That's that's really useful. Uh, there, there, of course, there are command line ways of doing this too, but sometimes it's nice to use a browser. Um, and then this is just sort of the, the release tarball um, page. So each, um, I guess I've been remiss in, in giving a good description, but um, each of these each of these are release tarballs signed, and, uh, and there's instructions on how to verify that. Some statistics on the number of, number of times downloaded. So bugs. Um, this is pretty. This is the the big one, I guess, um, for for Launchpad. Um, again, the, the sort of the attributes for bugs. 
very similar to, to a Bugzilla or any other bug tracker um, at, at a high level, but specifically some of the ways bugs are managed are, I think, far and away um, more um, logical and useful in, in Launchpad. So bugs themselves have states, priorities, owners, milestones. Um, I'm, I'll show an example here, but uh, just to mention them, subscribers, attachments, which might be patches or might be um, uh, screenshots, uh, especially for, for, you know, this isn't displaying correctly, screenshots are useful to, to upload. Um, but bugs can also be associated with branches. So someone fixes it and then upload, pushes a branch. If, if in the commit message it, you use the, the, um, the sort of uh, defined LP colon hash and then a bug number, on pushing it will automatically be linked against that bug, which is quite useful as a maintainer to be able to then sort of click through and, and see what, what had to change to fix that bug. Uh, bugs have duplicates. Um, links across other bug trackers is, I would say, has got to be one of the, the most important selling features of, of Launchpad. Being able to, to have sort of the, the bug tracker, one bug tracker to rule them all, right? One that, that can link against, um, you know, the Fedora's, Bugzilla, and Debian's, uh, BTS, and so forth. Um, and then as a subscriber to that bug, getting notification when that state has changed in, in other bug trackers is uh, really important. Um, you know, bugs have a running commentary, and they can have freeform tags. If you need to tag bugs, you know, um, relate it to, to uh, some particular aspect, and you want to be able to search on that. Um, now, the interface for bugs is, is uh, I, I kind of broke it down into three. The web interface is probably what, what we use the most recently, I guess within the last six months or so. More and more Ajax has been added, which uh, really reduces the number of page refreshes you have to do to, to change a bug state or priority or owner. Um, now that's all just pops up. You change it and you know, it doesn't have to reload the whole, uh, the whole page. Um, but for, for offline processing, the email interface is really useful. So, you know, I could sit on the plane offline entirely if I've got a, a local copy of my mail. Um, I, can, I can fire off messages and reply to bugs and change their, their state and their, um, their priority and whatever. And then when I get connected again, send, and boom, it goes to Launchpad, and all these bugs are updated if you use the, the appropriate syntax. Um, and then the Python API is, is really the coolest um, really the coolest thing. I, I think it was five or six years ago, uh, but I was writing um, wget web scrapers to, uh, to, to process Bugzilla mail, uh, or Bugzilla bugs on a mass basis. And having a Python API that you can really, you know, just uh, use in the way that you'd expect, right, to, to, to affect changes to a database on a, on a mass uh, basis is just so useful. Um, so here, here's a couple of screenshots. Um, this is the sort of Ajaxy looking, um, changing the bug status, and you can also see the different states. A bug start out in, in new. Um, a triager can move that to incomplete, and generally, we it's anytime you ask for more information, hey, can you can you send me this log? Can you do that? You would set the the status to incomplete to notify the the reporter or to other people talking on the bug that you need more information. Um, a bug that sits in incomplete for 60 days is marked as a candidate for expiration. It's not automatically expired, but you can sweep through at some point and say, well, this bug, I've asked for information, 60 days have gone by and nothing's happened. Um, as the owner of, of the project, you can then expire it. Um, invalid won't fix or are pretty self-explanatory. Confirmed is the tria is the state and, and the status we usually put to when someone else can, can reproduce the problem. Um, triage to, to me means that not only has it, and not to me, but in general the way we, we look at triage is um, not only is it confirmed, but we also know how to fix it. Uh, maybe it's not being fixed yet, but we have our head wrapped around what needs to be done to solve this problem. Um, and that manifests itself in many different ways based on your project. Um, in progress, obviously, um, means someone's actively working on it. As a personal rule, I only set things in progress if it's assigned to a person. It doesn't make sense to me to have a bug that's in progress but not assigned to a person or a team. Um, fixed commit and fixed released, obviously, are, are um, pretty self-explanatory. The key difference being that, you know, if you're bundling up a bunch of fixes before um, actually publishing a release, uh, it's useful to notify the subscribers to the bug that 
the fix has been committed, and then when it changes state to release, then they can go and download a, a new tarball or install the new package. Um, I kind of covered up some of the useful information. Let me see. I have a couple, couple more. So importance, which is separate than status. Obviously, status is you know what what state the bug is in. The importance is you know how does it relate to the other bugs in the in the um, in in the system associated with that project or package. Uh, critical high, medium low, wish list, and undecided. Again, when a new bug is filed, it starts out in new state and an un undecided importance. Um, for my for for the packages and the projects I manage, I usually publish a um, a guide to uh, to setting the importance for triagers who are working. You know, because I don't necessarily triage all of my bugs. Sometimes people volunteer to do so. I usually publish a guide to how to set the importance for um, something like KVM, which I maintain in Ubuntu. A critical bug is a bug that's eating people's data. So, um, a bug where where uh, there's file system corruption or something like that. Um, high being something that crashes the host. Um, medium being something that crashes the guest. Uh, low being almost anything else cosmetic or any, almost anything else, and wish list being uh, cosmetic or, or purely a feature request. Um, but you know, different different projects and packages manifest their importance, uh, bugs' importance in different ways. Um, assignee, again, these are, these are um, people or teams within, within Launchpad. Uh, there's this neat uh, sort of dynamic interface for searching for a, a person to assign the bug to or changing the, the assignee. Uh, there's a, a quick link to assign yourself or to, to remove the assignee. Um, let's see. Yeah, so, so here's a, this is a good example of a bug that has sort of a lot going on at the top, and I'd like to walk through, um, I guess I can just use cursor. Yeah, here we go, instead of jumping. Um, this is, a, this is a, an interesting bug that, that has a, a lot going on. So uh, does anybody remember this particular bug? I know it hit slash dot, um, was fairly, uh, fairly intensive about a year ago in July. Um, a bug that that basically could take down um, take down your DNS server. Um, the the neat thing here we've got um, this bug is set as affecting bind nine in Debian, Fedora, and Ubuntu. Right, it's the same bug that was introduced by bind upstream that uh, is is uh, manifests itself in each of these different distributions, and there's a state set for each of them um, for whatever reason. I can't imagine Debian has not fixed this, but uh, this status did not get updated for Debian. Um, but Fedora, at some point, um, fixed the bug. And there's history down here at the bottom that shows the date and time that, that that change was pulled. But we've also got the Red Hat bug number and the Debian bug number. Um, owners within, so this is the Ubuntu package. Within the Ubuntu package, this shows an example of uh, the series. So these are each of the, the different places where this Find nine package existed. Dapper, Hardy, Intrepid, Johnny, Karmic, um, the status and importance. Each of these now they're they're all identical here, but obviously, or maybe not obviously, but each of these can be uh, independently set. So the status might be you know conf won't fix perhaps in, in Dapper. Uh, Dapper's support's going to expire eventually, and a bug like this, we'd probably say yeah, upgrade from Dapper at some point, right? Uh, but the importance could also be independent um, and the owners as well. Um, we don't have milestones targeted here, but these milestones might say something like uh, an, an alpha or a beta or an update, uh, just the place by which we want to fix it. And it's, um, it's easy to search for bugs that are milestoned against uh, uh, you know, a particular milestone. So from a release perspective, um, we're able to, to, as we roll, we get closer and closer to release, we can go and look at the, uh, all bugs that are uh, targeted against a particular milestone that have not yet been fixed. And that becomes our burn down list that we, we need to fix all of these bugs before we can release or change the state appropriately. Um, these links here, this is how you mark it as affecting another project. So this, the, the, the sort of leftmost um, entries, these are different projects. No, excuse me, that's not right. Those are different distributions. Yes, those are different distributions. So. If, uh, if this were actually a web page, I'd click Effects Distribution, and I could throw in another distribution, Gen 2 or something like that, and link it against Gen 2's uh, 
uh, bug. Effects project, project is actually, this, is, uh, this means launchpad project. So if the project itself were managed in launchpad, um, then that's, that's where you could mark it as affecting that project. Um, and then users or other people can nominate for release, and that's how it gets added to this, uh, this like indentation right here. These are, these are Ubuntu releases. Um, so this is a, 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 the email interface. I'm not going to go through how to do it, but this is the URL where you can get to the syntax for, for changing all these different fields within, um, within the Launchpad bug from the email interface. Uh, re really, really useful. Um, and the Launchpad lib is also quite useful. This is um, a pretty simple example of, of how someone who wants to, you know, hello world for a, for a Launchpad lib. But, I mean, literally it's as easy as this, um, instantiating this object and changing some value, saving it, and it, if you're network connected, syncs it back up to Launchpad. Um, so answers is a interesting distinction from uh, bugs, and in a lot of ways overlaps with functionality that is present elsewhere, like a forum or something like that. But answers are sort of like a forum in that um, some bugs are not really bugs, they're, they're really questions, and some questions are actually frequently asked questions. And it's good to have sort of a place to go and, and point people to and, and um, link them against bugs and projects and people and so forth. Um, bugs can be converted into answers and, and back and forth. So if you're looking at a bug and you're trying to fix it or you're looking at a bug and you're deciding it's not really a bug, it's actually a question, you move it over to an answer or maybe an answer or a question started out as a question and it's actually a bug or a wish list feature or something. So they can be moved back and forth. Um, to me, this is one of the most important ways that, it's, that you support your users as an upstream that's trying to support uh, downstream users. Um, and so th this is a list of, of questions. You can see these questions have numbers which are uh, different than bug numbers. Um, I always found that interesting. I'm going to have to ask the Launchpad guys why that's a, a different ID. But um, so, um, so, you know, there's the summary of the question, date, and, um, the, the person who submitted it, and then an assignee if there's a particular person who's going to answer it. And then the state for, for, for answers is different than the states for bugs. Um, and here's a, a sample one, one that I could kind of get to fit on one screen. But someone asked a, a question, and remarkably he answered him himself, <laughs> which is always nice. Um, but, you know, he was able to set the status to solve at that point once it had a, a resolution. Um, and so blueprints, um, I'm kind of wrapping up the talk now. But blueprints um, are basically project management, uh, a lightweight project management tool. Um, if you're familiar with other project management tools, this won't feel anything like it. If, if, you, <laughs> if you dislike project management tools, you're going to love this because it's really lightweight compared to um, any other, you know, sort of massive project management tool. The, the neat thing about, about it is that it gives you a place to put these sort of overarching themes that your project wants to tackle that doesn't necessarily fit into a single bug or into a single question, but it's you know, we want to rewrite the back end to do this in a better, faster, sexier way. Um, but uh, blueprint, blueprints themselves have priorities and definition and an implementation and an improver and an assignee and so forth. Um, and then blueprints can be linked to bugs and code branches. So it sort of ties everything together, the people, the bugs, the branches, um, and so forth. So here's a, just a, a random blueprint that I chose. Um, Someone wanted to implement a graphical user interface for this crypto uh, file system. Um, you know, it has a priority that's set by a person who has the authority to set the priority. Um, the approver, the drafter, who's different from the drafter, who's different, uh, actually it's the same as the assignee in this case, but, you know, a, a person who's assigned to, to design it versus the person who's designed to implement it, you know, where it stands as far as um, its implementation and what it's targeted against. Um, and then the one or more bugs that are related to this. So, and then subscribers. These are people who have expressed an interest in tracking this project and knowing you know, where it is and how it's going. So translations, um, um, I'm always baffled by translations, but I do my best. Um, Launchpad has an incredible interface for translations, and it's, it's just always getting better. As an upstream maintainer, you upload the pod or POF or tar file, you know, the, the, the thing that extracts your, your Git text information. 
Um, people go in, and I should probably actually transpose these two. Other people go in and translate those like short message blobs into the languages that they are capable of translating. And then you as maintainer, as part of your release process, download the translated information and insert it into your tarball. Um, and then the, the coolest thing is that translations can be shared across other projects. So, you know, once one person's translated, you know, one word into Spanish, French, you know, whatever, um, it, it, gets, it can be accepted pretty much everywhere. So this is just sort of a, a quick look at the translations. These are the translations that this project has been translated into, sort of the status. So you can see that Brazilian Portuguese, it's most of the way there. Bulgarian, it's most of the way there. Hey, it's fully translating to English, UK, um, and French, <laughs> um, Indonesian, Italian, et cetera, whereas some have, have a bit more to, to go. Um, and then the actual translation, I, uh, the only language I know a little bit other than English is Latin, and I don't actually translate anything into Latin, but I use it to test to make sure that, that, that my process is working. Um, but here you can see kind of th what it looks like if you are a translator, right? Um, there's one to 44 different phrases that need to be translated for this project. In English, the word is menu, and there's no translation currently. However, in other, two other packages in Launchpad, Amarok and KDE Libs, people have translated the word menu in Latin to agendum and index. Um, and here you can add your, new, your own or choose one of these two and submit, and then it's, you know, my little progress bar gets a little bit, a little bit further along for, uh, for Latin. Um, this interface, if you've ever worked in translations, is incredible compared to what most people use or traditionally have had to use to translate projects. Um, so in conclusion, uh, Launchpad itself is now completely free. Um, it's hosting your project in Launchpad as free as in dollars for open source projects. Um, uh, the, these were, or the, this top one was a barrier to entry for a lot of people, or at least a stated barrier to entry for a lot of people until um, sometime last year, last summer. Um, but, um, you know, that's, that's completely changed. You, you can download all of that source code now. Um, and then contact information for myself. So. All right. Are there uh, questions? There's one. Um, has someone on the phrase in print been, has someone actually proven that by, have you seen a, a second implementation of Launchpad outside? I've not. I don't have any interest in doing that myself, but I, I don't know. Um, cool. Personally, to Launchpad being open to me is more important that I can go and fix the things that bug me about Launchpad <laughs> in the same way that I can fix the things that bug me about any other open source project. Um, although theoretically, I guess you could run your own Launchpad instance. Uh, the, the power of Launchpad being able to integrate hundreds of, of projects and thousands of packages, it, I think it, it necessarily depends on there being like a central database for that. I, I, I'm not a Launchpad developer, so maybe they can answer this better than, than me. But I think, it would, I think you would rip out the guts of Launchpad to create a second deployment that has its own independent database if sharing information is your goal. If your goal is just to like track your bugs privately inside of your firewall, you know, maybe, maybe it'll, it'll work for you for that. Okay, maybe we should repeat the questions in the future. So this one was uh, about whether there is a second Launchpad out in the wild already, given that it's now free, and you answered that. Any other questions? Are you saving them all for tomorrow? There's one. What sort of statistics can you generate on that? Bugs filed, um, commits, that's that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so uh, if I guess if I had reliable internet, I could demo, or I'd be happy to show you in the hall. Um, yeah, certainly you can see you know the number of bugs in any particular state, the people associated with your project, um, you know uh, commits, branches. Um, it, I don't think that there's any one tool that just says, tell me all the stats about my project, but um, I, we saw that um, on the, 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 co the tarball release page, the number of downloads uh, requested for that. Um, the, the database is actually fairly accessible as well through the, through the launchpad lib. So, um, you know, if you wanted to, to write code to go and do that, it's not a matter of screen scraping. I, I think you can do a lot of that using launchpad lib. Um, doing your queries and, and processing your data in Python. Okay, I had another question. Um, let's say I wanted to um, do more of the statistics stuff and I wanted to have all the data. Are you aware of a, 
of a way in which I could like mass pull out all of the data and have it available to me locally. The API will actually let you have all of that now. Then you need, sorry? Then you need to patch more. <laughs> okay. Patch, yeah. So the, the, the answer was that if it's exported, obviously, then I have I can access it. And if not, then I just have to submit a patch to make it's, it exported. Something along those lines. Okay. So, so Canonical or the Launchpad developers will provide me with the information. Pound launchpad I ask. or Pound Launchpad and IRC um, free node. I, in a lot of cases, you can just ask for a dump of your database information, and you can get it from Tim or someone. Bumper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's another one. Another question back there. Yep. UD. Oh, okay. UDD. That's right. It's not the universal Debian database, but or Ubuntu distributed development. So that that's good. And Debian is going to have this information in a local database as well. I think that was actually one of the concerns. Um, not necessarily that the code was non-free, but that the, that the, the data, data you would never be able. You know, it's up in the cloud, and you can't ever yeah. get it again. That yeah. kind of thing. Any other questions? Um, John, so, um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, as, as Dustin said earlier, um, one of the great, one of the main sort of power of Launchpad is being able to link between different projects and between distributions and projects. And people and code and, you know, it's yeah, all those so, objects so, that are. Kind of, um, like, you know, it's free and it's a free world, but we kind of think that if you're running an open source project and you're not linking into the Launchpad database itself, then that's kind of being a little bit almost antisocial. So basically, we're not going to rush to encourage people to install multiple launchpad instances. Well, I was thinking of running like a paper trip for my yeah. group, my group. Your yeah, proprietary project, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. A package like that actually help people hack on the open source code. Because right now, it's kind of hard to get them to hack on the open source code. Maybe we should just set up that get build that launchpad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, so, so far, from my understanding, that the question has been about whether I could, at some point in time, just apt get install Launchpad. And, and I guess the answer was that this is not necessarily a priority because um, it, it would be like anti-social, is what you said, um, because you don't have the data centralized anymore. There was a discussion like two years ago on a blog, and I think I even commented on that, where my suggestion would have been like, you know, have it so that it's this decentralized. Not centralized, but have it decentralized. And I think you guys are possibly working on that. I don't know about that. We're thinking about working, yeah. thinking about considering to work on yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So basically, we're not in a rush to make a Debian package. If someone wants to, that's that would be wonderful. Yeah. So we're not actively working on it. If someone comes along and makes it such that you can app get it, it's free software, and I don't think anyone's going to, I don't think we could possibly tell you not to. Yeah. You could probably put Launchpad into a Launchpad PPA, and people could. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dustin. You've shared your enthusiasm for Launchpad with us, and uh, there's going to be more tomorrow, so any other questions until tomorrow? Applause now.